Looking back now after 20 years of strategy in the co-op, I think it was relatively easy compared to other business models. So the co-op was already open to the idea, given the, the, the roots of cooperation and principles that, and values that the co-op's founded on. But it certainly didn't feel easy at the time. So when the fair trade marked and it was new and it didn't really have any um, commercial um, proven uh, success, it was about striking out and, and pioneering and moving it forward, which is, is a, it's a difficult thing to do when you're in a business that still needs to make money, even though it's reinvesting that money into communities, when you're still working in a, a commercial environment, when you've got big brands that are on the shelf that the customers want, when you've got things like um, price pressures from, in terms of retail. So finding a way through, not to the consumer, but actually to the business first and foremost was the, the first big challenge. So bringing people on board and convincing the business itself that this is the right thing to do was a big challenge because, again, the point of fair trade is you pay more. So commercially, you need to demonstrate that there's a reason to do that and a, a reward for that uh, and you can't do that at the outset you have to take a long-term vision so it was about uh, a relentless pursuit really and uh, being really um, tenacious uh, to try and get people on board and to do it by step by step as well um, and once we cracked it and once we'd actually realized that commercially this was working um, and the customers were actually buying into it it became a heck of a lot easier um, but then, of course, you've done it on the first category, which was chocolate. You then had to go through the whole process again, the way the, the business is structured. How do we now talk about that on coffee? And you had to convince a whole new um, lot of people. But each time it got easier because you could take with you, well, it's worked on chocolate, this is how we've done it. Let's now do it on coffee. Let's, let's support fair trade more in this area. And then on tea, and then it, it went on from there. So gradually easier. It's quite strange sometimes. Maybe I'm just too close to it, but quite often I'll look and I'll see opportunities that are quite obvious and I just don't understand why they're not being grasped. Um, and the biggest one for me is that the co-op has made a real name for itself in fair trade generally, but fair trade wine, the co-op is actually the, the world's largest seller of fair trade wine. Um, great relationships in, in South Africa, Chile, Argentina, great project work going on, great investment, great quality wine. And it's the one category that, because of the retail price point, you can actually get away quite easily with um, increase that retail price. So you can sell a bottle of wine with a fair trade premium, fair trade cost in there, because most of the cost of that unit is actually duty into the UK and it's transportation. You're not actually paying that much more as a total package. So the consumer can stand that quite easily, especially when the, the wine is good. And what the surprise really is, is that the Coop has, has, has really pushed the boundaries on fair trade wine, created the opportunities for the retail sector, yet there's still little support for fair trade wine in other uh, retail outlets. So you see odd ones here and there, but I would have thought if I was a, a, another retailer competing with a co-op, I'd have been jumping on that opportunity, buying that fair trade wine in, and actually going uh, along with that fair trade journey as well. Much more challenging on things like bananas. Wine's so easy to do. Why are more retailers not doing it? The other big challenge, I guess, is like any business, the co-op um, has had its ups and downs. That was addressed really from, uh, from my point of view, because there was no way I was going to let it go, was creating policies to say we're already 100% fair trade on bananas, and as a policy, the co-op will always maintain that position. And then it was working with the members who own the co-op, five million of them, so having conversations with a few very um, uh, important people within that membership organization side of the business and so those guys were the ones then that were going to the AGM saying we want to protect fair trade we want to do more on fair trade so finding your own allies uh, I guess at the right times was always something that I was quite keen to uh, to continue with. <laughs>